In this edition of Ask the Doc, I got a question from someone who has been dealing with some nasty sciatica pain for the past two years that seems to only be getting worse each day. For those of you that don't know me, my name is Dr. Matt Maggio. I am a soft tissue injury treatment expert specifically for neck, shoulder, sciatica, and hip pain. My focus is on diagnosing and treating adhesion, also known as scar tissue, and reducing inflammation from chronic injuries without the use of drugs, injections, or surgeries, which does lead to a significant increase in overall functioning, flexibility, and long-lasting pain relief. Back at it for Ask the Doc. Just a quick reminder, you can send any questions you may have about neck, shoulder, sciatica, or low back injuries. And if my insights can help, I'll be sure to make you a video. And all the information to reach out can be found wherever you're consuming this video. The question this week came from Kelsey on Instagram. The question was, I am 38 years old and have been dealing and sometimes suffering from nasty sciatica that goes all the way down the back of my right leg and into my foot. I've had two MRIs that confirmed some disc bulging, done two rounds of cortisone shots, and seen three physical therapists, two chiropractors, and two neurosurgeons. None of the conservative care options of PT and chiro helped. Now I am being told my only option is surgery to fix the discs pushing on the nerves. I have been doing my research and stumbled across some horrible information about failed back surgeries and the problems they cause. I don't want to have surgery, especially if it makes my problem worse, but I'm running out of hope that I have any options left. Any insights as to what is going on or how I could potentially avoid surgery at all costs. Thank you so much for sending that question in. Um, unfortunately, I get a lot of these questions every week about the broken medical system and how people are lied to, overpromised, underdelivered, and they wonder why we are in a pain pill epidemic. So jumping right in, this idea of failed back surgery, this is a new code that came out. So anytime you have insurance companies, they have these things called diagnosis codes. It's basically just like giving the insurance company an idea of what they'll cover and what they'll pay for. And back in like the late 90s and all through the 2000s, they were doing a ton of back surgeries on people. Like everyone was getting back surgery. Then we got 10, 15 years later, and these people were really jacked up and having a lot of issues. And it created a new code called failed back surgery. Now, the other thing we want to think about too is just the risk of surgery itself. You know, the surgeons often paint it as like, hey, we'll just go in there. It'll be nice and easy, a little, little cut here, a little stitch here, and you'll be good to go. They never talk about all the other side effects, like you could possibly get an infection. You could have a reaction to anesthesia. Um, the surgery could make the problem worse. It might not fix it at all. And even in some cases, rare, but in some cases, you can actually die on the table. That's a lot of risk. And they're not sharing all that information in there. They just kind of make it this easy, rosy thing. You know, just go in, get the surgery, and you'll be good to go. They don't talk about afterwards, all the rehab you have to do, all the pain you'll be in, the pain medications, the fluids, everything. Surgery isn't this magical thing. It should always be the last thing that you do. Now, the MRI is always important, but it isn't everything. You know, there's two camps out there in the injury treatment space. On one side is mostly the orthopedic doctors are like, they see an MRI and they go, oh, your disc is damaged. That's what's causing the problem. We're going to go in there and do surgery. Now, on the other side, there's these providers that are like, hey, your MRI doesn't matter at all. Everyone is walking around with some type of bulge or some type of herniation and don't even know it. That's what these studies have shown. They're both actually wrong. It's somewhere in the middle. Yes, the disc is a component of it and then other issues as well. But simply saying it's one thing only, either it is the disc or it's not the disc at all is actually dangerous for you, the client, and you're getting a lot of bad information. You know, so much of treatment nowadays, especially in the modern medical world, is treating the effect instead of the cause. You know, the disc getting injured is the effect of other things not working correctly. And medicine itself is like always going in and trying to fix the effect and not getting to the root cause. So that causes a lot of problems. And that's why there's this issue called failed back surgery. So a key component I look for in my patients that come in with a sciatica like pain presentation, the first question I always want to know is, when is it more intense? Is it worse when you're sitting or standing? I always say, hey, if you had to pick and you had to either sit for eight hours or stand for eight hours, like which one would you rather not do because it creates a lot of pain? So if someone says to me, if sitting 
is causing a lot of the problems, I'm going to focus more on the low back and the discs and the structures in there and all the muscles around there and treating the adhesion that builds up around there. It's also known as scar tissue. So basically over time, when the muscles get overworked, they get overstretched, bad posture, stress, life, lack of exercise, everything you can think of, the muscles don't get enough blood flow and oxygen. So they send a signal to the brain and they say, hey, there's a problem here. And the brain says, okay, we'll start giving you some of this adhesion to help buffer the area. Over time, that adhesion gets bigger and bigger. It's like glue that gets inside the muscle and it gets bigger and bigger and then makes that muscle less flexible and weak. Now those muscles can't really generate the force that they need to. So that force has to go somewhere and it starts to put pressure on the disc in the joint. And when that does, that's when you start getting disc herniations, disc bulges and things like that. Think of the disc and the degeneration as like your thumb and it's stuck inside a car door. The car door is all of that adhesion. The thumb is the disc getting stuck in there. You can't give this a chance to heal up till you remove that. And that's what I talked about this idea of cause versus effect. So basically when they're doing back surgery, they're just going in there and they're removing the door for a second and pulling it out. And it might feel better for a few months, but it's gonna slam right back down because he never got to the root cause of that. So what I wanna include first in the video this week is a demonstration of me treating adhesion in the low back and breaking down some of that because the best part about adhesion is it's completely reversible with expert treatment and I'm gonna link that up right now. Sink straight in, we're gonna back out a bit and then our tension is going to be that lean with our knee and pushing through that back leg and letting it come up to me. And that's going to get a very effective treatment. So the first step is, come back up for me a little bit. The first step to get our depth is we are going to sink in with our sternum straight down and then we're gonna back out a bit and then our tension is going to be a lean with the body. And then the client's gonna come up through that motion nice and slow and you're gonna let it come up to you just like that. So, couple take homes from the video. It's very slow. It's very deliberate. You know, most of our clients and patients describe the treatments as like a hurts, but good. But basically what we do is we put the muscle and the adhesion in a shortened position. We get some depth and tension. And then the client goes through a full range of motion. We create a lot of tension and pressure on there. And that breaks it down. It breaks down all that adhesion. So you get more blood flow, more oxygen. The muscle becomes healthier, flexible, and creates long lasting pain relief. And the best part is it can take some of that pressure off of that disc and give those discs a chance to heal up. Now, the other type that we would see is say in the history, standing is really bad, where you're like, oh my gosh, I could not have to stand for more than 10 minutes without excruciating back pain or sciatica pain down the hip, down the leg, everywhere like that. When this happens, I start to focus more in an area deep in the back part of the hip, um, deep to the glutes, and there's a, the sciatic nerve can actually get glued to a very small, deep muscle there. It's actually called the superior gemellus. So basically, nerves are built with about 15% of extra slack to make their way through the muscles, they start in the in the low back and go all the way down to the leg. And what happens over time when that scar tissue develops, as I said earlier, eventually that nerve gets caught and it creates an entrapment. And entrapments produce things like numbness, aching, burning, and tension. So what happens is that nerve gets entrapped. So when you're going to stand, it's pulling a lot. So a lot of times it won't hurt directly where it's getting caught, which is deep in the glutes and deep in the muscles of the hip. You usually feel it higher up in the back, or in this case with Kelsey, she's feeling it further down the leg. So in order to break that down, we need to get proper depth and tension on that nerve as well, specifically at the sciatic nerve. So what I want to include next in the video is an example of me treating a nerve entrapment directly at this, this muscle. And you can see how we break it down effectively with an effective treatment. So I'll link that video up right now. What we are treating here is scar tissue using manual scar tissue treatment to the sciatic nerve, specifically the muscles deep in the glutes. Scar tissue formation in this area is very common and can lead to tension, sciatica-like pain, numbness down the leg, low back pain, and decreased flexibility. Scar tissue is the most common cause of decreased flexibility and pain in the human body. With expert diagnosis and treatment demonstrated here, as well as the use of an assistant, scar tissue can be completely reversible. This leads to long-lasting pain relief from chronic sciatica and low back pain. 
Click the link below to learn more. So another component of the treatment, you can see it's deliberate, it's focused, it's not a rush. As I said, it should be like a hurts, but good. We put that adhesion stuck on the nerve in a shortened position. I get proper depth and tension into that entrapment. And then I have the client go through a full range of motion. It's going to be a little painful, but nothing too bad. And what you're going to feel afterwards is when that nerve frees up, it takes the pressure off of there. And a lot of that numbness and aching and burning and tension will go away. The key, the key component of all of this, and this is why I make these videos, is the reason the medical system is so messed up is because no one's actually figuring out what's going on. They're basically just treating based off of symptoms only and what they're trained in. You know, the orthos want to do surgery injections. PTs want to do exercises and stretches. The chiropractors tell you to get adjusted. But we don't know what's really causing the problem because we must know exactly what and where the problem is. Because if not, we can't fix it. And we're just stuck guessing, which unfortunately is 90% of injury treatment and why people have such poor outcomes. So in closing, if you're dealing with sciatica and low back pain, you've been dealing with it, say, for at least six months, you've seen at least three other providers and you're still in pain and running out of hope, then you can reach out directly to us and request an injury consultation to get some real answers about what is going on and really just get on the path to getting long lasting pain relief. So you can stay the hell away from pain pills, injections, and surgeries, which only make things worse. I appreciate you watching the video, and we'll see you on the next one.